Hey everybody, welcome to Bestie Book Reviews. I'm here with my bestie Mandy. And I'm here with my bestie Jessica. And look at my pretty flowers. Mandy got pretty flowers today. I really wanted them to be on my shelf and they wouldn't fit, so. It's okay. They have to sit on my desk and no one can see them. I know, it's sad. And then she pulls them in front of her and it looks like she's sprouting flowers, so. <laughs> Okay. okay, so this is our one minute book rec video for the week. So this is where we go over all of the books that we read throughout the last week and we give you guys a one minute synopsis a one minute synopsis for each book. But before we get started with that, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We are still doing our road to 1k giveaway and our next level is going to be 750. So Mandy, tell them about 750. Right. We are so excited right. about that. We have Nine Minutes by Beth Flynn. If you've watched our channel, you will know that Jessica and I were obsessed with this book. It was also our number one read for the month of July for both of us. So we have this and Beth reached out to us when she saw us like obsessing over her book and she sent us a signed copy to give away. We also have a bookmark that goes with it, a magnet, and some other fun swag that we're going to throw into for $7.50. Yeah. So we are like so beyond excited for $7.50. Yes. Um, we also have really cool stuff coming up for $1,000 too. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, share our channel, give us a like, do all the good stuff yes. so that you can get in. And if you follow us on Instagram, you get an extra entry. So make sure you do that. That is, um, that, that's linked down below. So yes. Take care of that. Okay. So Mandy, tell me about your reading week. Okay. I read six books. I had a couple five stars and I had a couple. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I that actually was surprised I had six books. I felt like I really hardly read anything this past week. This was a really, really rough book or book. This is a really, really rough week because Mandy went back to teaching this week and it was so lonely. I was so lonely. I think it was harder on me than it was on you. Just saying. <laughs> the first week back at school every year is rough because I have Mandy home with home, like home where I can call her all summer long at any time of the day. And then she goes back to school and I'm like, I gotta call. I can't call Mandy. She's working. It's really rough. It's really hard. Um, okay, so um to because this week was so hard, I actually read eight books. No, I read nine books. We're going to talk about eight because one of them was the reread that I do several times a year, which is the Golden Dynasty. And I've talked about that a lot. So we're not going to talk about it. If you guys really want to know, it's another channel. It's another other video. So yeah. Okay. I'm getting my time okay. already. Okay. You seem very talkative already. Sorry. Pull this out. Sorry. I missed you. Ooh, look at what I'm drinking. I love pumpkin spice. Yeah, you do. You used to make me go through the go through um, Dairy Queen every year when they had their pumpkin milkshakes. Oh, pumpkin milkshakes? Yes. Like a crazy person. We have to go Dairy Queen. They got their pumpkin milkshakes. Yes. You would live for those. I did. It saved our life one time, possibly. Remember that? No. Yeah, we were. We went there, and there the drive through was kind of backed up a little bit and we're like, Oh, do we really want to? And I'm like, yes, we do. <laughs> and so we went through and got the pumpkin milkshakes and then we're, we were heading to our destination and there had been a really nasty wreck. Like, and it was timed almost perfectly that if we would have left instead of going there, we may have been like in that wreck. Now that you're saying something about it, I, I do. It's jogging the memory there. This is very odd because usually you remember everything. And I I'm do like, remember ah. sitting in line at our Dairy Queen, that waiting, like a really long line. I remember that mm -hmm. conversation, but I don't remember the accident. <gasps> yeah. Was, it, was the like, accident in Adna? Or was yeah. it outside? Of Adna? I, now I remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, guys, pumpkin spice milkshakes will save your life, apparently. <laughs> well, that's what I would tell you so you wouldn't give me crap about it anymore. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's get started. Yes. Okay. You're first. Okay. I have, oops, my phone like decided to take a nap. Okay. It's ready. Okay. So Are my you first, ready? I am. Okay. Okay. My first book is by C.W. Farnsworth. This is an author that you love, Mandy, and you've been trying to get me to read. I uh, do love is, her. 
yeah, this is Pretty Ugly Promises. This is her only uh, mafia romance that she has. So this is mafia, obviously. So this is about Lila and Nick. So they meet in college and they hit it off. She's kind of the reader, like the quiet, you know, she's not, she doesn't put herself out there, girl. And he is just this gorgeous guy. They meet at a party one night, they hit it off and they are like glued to each other. And then all of a sudden he disappears and it's him and his best friend. They just disappear. She can't find them. And she finds out she's pregnant and she does everything she can to find Nick at this point and can't. So then we fast forward nine years later, she gets cut and has to go to the emergency room. Her then boyfriend takes her to the emergency room where she sees Nick's best friend. And she's like, uh, hey, where is he? Where'd he go? Come to find out his family had been murdered, uh, his dad and his brothers, and he has to run the Bratva in Russia for the family. And she has no clue that this is going on. But he finds out that there's a kid through that best friend and he comes back for what's his. It was really good. I gave it four stars. I kind of wanted it a little bit angstier than what it was, which is why I didn't hit that five star mark, but I loved it. It was so good. It was really good. So go check that one out. Mandy, put that on your list. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Okay. My first book of the week was The Brit by Jody Ellen Malpas. Hopefully yes. I said that right. I think so. Okay. This is about Rose and Danny. Danny is basically when he's a little kid, he is living in a horrible situation and he is basically plucked from the streets by a mafia boss who raises him as his only child. And Danny is now taking over the mafia empire. And Rose has been, she has just a horrible life and she's basically forced into prostitution and she's owned by this man who makes her go and he has something over her. So this is why she doesn't try and leave, but she makes, he makes her go and become the, this wannabe mayor, um, his mistress. And so she's secretly seeing him and supposedly gathering intel and things like that. And Danny is mad at this, the, the guy who's trying to be mayor and he decides to take Rose. And so he kidnaps Rose and I apparently didn't manage to set the timer. Sorry. <laughs> so we'll just say that my time is probably up about now. Cause I'm like, Ooh, I better hurry. So Danny kidnaps her and the two of them, you know, captor captive type situation. Yeah. It is really, really good though, because they both have a lot of healing that they need to do from their past, but, oh, I really enjoyed it. Five stars. Yay. So when I told you that I thought I had read this one already and I DNF'd it, it wasn't this one. It was the This Man trilogy and it wasn't that one. So I need to go read that one. It was good. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about my next read. Okay. Okay. So my second read of the week was The White Princess. This is by Philippa Gregory. This is probably the second time I've read this book, but this is what the stars um, TV show, like it came from this book. So this is very loosely based on historical events and historical people. Um, it's not extremely historical accurate. So don't go writing like a paper on it or anything. Okay. Just, just know that. So this is about um, Henry the seventh and his wife, Elizabeth and it's their relationship. She was in a relationship with um, her uncle, Richard the third, and then he was killed at Bosworth. And then she was given to Henry to be a queen um, for him when he comes to England. And so this is their, their story. Um, I have loved this story. I'm kind of, I'm, I love the Tudors. I love that whole time period. I'm really into that. So uh, for me, this was great. This kind of reads a little bit more like women's fiction because their love story like doesn't I mean, it's, there's things that go on, but she doesn't really fall in love with him until later in the end. But I still think it's a love story. <laughs> so that was good. That's it. I love that one. So yeah. My next book is called Desert Island by okay. Olivia T. Turner. This was a novella. It's about Carson, who's been stranded on this island for eight years by himself. And Bridget is a pilot and she's supposed to be taking some bachelor bachelorette type goods, including like a blow up 
men dolls with like erect penises. Wow. <laughs> and she's supposed to be delivering them to an island for this party. And her plane goes down in the Bermuda Triangle. And she ends up washing ashore with Jeffrey, who she names. He is one of the blow up dolls. <laughs> And Carson finds her and Carson is very excited that somebody's on the island with him and that somebody is as beautiful as Bridget is on the island with him. And so this is their novella story about being on the island together. I did read some critiques. Look at that. You were at her. Oh, look at you. I know. I did read some critiques where some people were like, oh, it was way too insta lovey and stuff for me. The guy's been on the island for eight years. I mean, <laughs> and this beautiful girl washes ashore. I don't I don't even think she'd have had to been beautiful, right? She could have been a 90-year-old woman and he'd have been like, Whoa, woman! <laughs> I mean, you read it for what it is. So it yeah. was a four star read for me. It's a novella. Like, yeah, it was a fun, slightly smutty read. Like, but hey, if you're going to wash up on the shore, Carson is described as a very good looking fit man. And he already knows the island very well and has been surviving there for eight years. So he like can take care of her. Yeah. Yeah, it was All good. the hard stuff is done. So exactly. She just gets to roll on up and ask for her coconut water. Yeah. Yeah. There's a funny part where she's using Jeffrey as a pillow on the island. <laughs> and she wakes up thinking that it's Carson's appendage at her mouth. And she's kind of having like a dream about it. Like <laughs> she wakes up and it's Jeffrey. <laughs> That's funny yeah it was a good read uh-huh that's, that's okay funny quirky okay all right my next one is a little more serious <laughs> so okay I, I read um angel unseen by jay Bree. this is an mc romance i didn't even know that jay Bree had written an mc romance um but this is about angel and tommy so angel is homeless she's running from something uh we don't know what but she uses a fake ID to get a job at the strip club that the MC runs. Now, she is not a stripper. She is just a girl who's had a lot of dance um, class. Like she's majored in dance and she knows she knows what she's doing when it comes to dance. But she does not want to do the extras that the girls do. And she has said, I am here to dance. That is it. And uh, the girls don't like her because she won't do the extras for the MC that the other girls do. Because uh, MC runs the, the strip club. Uh, Tommy has this curse. They call it the Callahan curse. All the men in his family, they, when they see like the girl that's supposed to be theirs, they call it being, um, cunt struck, <laughs> which I'm like, really? That's the word you're going to use. Okay. But it's like the minute he sees her, he knows that she is supposed to be his no matter what. And, um, she's got some baggage. He's got some baggage. There's some bad things going on in the MC. She's like the girl that all the guys want at the strip club because she has this classical trained dance. Like she can move in ways that other girls can't move. So I actually give this five stars. I really liked this. It was different. And the fact that she was a dancer, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to feel about this, but I really liked it. So I gave it five stars. All right. All right. Okay. My next book is called Filthy Disciple. And this is by, it's a collaboration by Cassandra, Cassandra Robbins and Serena Ackroyd. I really wanted to like this book. It's about Cade. He's hired by the mafia side to go and rescue this girl. And it, the girl is this doctor's daughter. And the doctor has done like all this wonderful repair work and like helped some of the people. And so they owe him a favor basically. And he's like, my daughter is with this MC group out in California. They're holding her hostage. They have her drugged up. So Cade goes to basically rescue her. And Cindy is her name, but Isabel is her name back home. Cindy is her name with the MC. She is actually friends with the MC people. They've given her a job. They've helped her get clean because she did have a drug problem. And so Kate's kind of learning like that the story doesn't quite make sense. So he ends up not really kidnapping. She comes willingly with him and he kind of tricks her a little bit into going back to New York with him. I like the summary makes it sound like this is going to be a really good read. 
but I didn't like it. I gave it three stars. There was way too... Now, Insta-Love on the Desert Island worked for me. The Insta-Love in here where he's like dropping his pants so quickly with her, I didn't get that. Mm -hmm. Like he's hired to do this job. Like I just didn't get that part. And it should have been a lot angstier, I think. I don't know. It just didn't work for me. I haven't read the other books in this world, though, but I read that you didn't have to. So maybe that did take some of it away. But I just I can do it. Don't care for it. Yeah. And you and I talked about I like Serena Ackroyd's filthy series or filthy the five points Mm -hmm. series, but I don't like her MC series. And so maybe it's something about I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right. Okay. What's your next read? So I read Immoral Steps by Marissa Farrar. So this one is quite the ride here. Okay, so this is the first, this is a trilogy. Um, This book ends on a cliffhanger. I started the second book. I haven't finished it yet. Um, But this is about Lainey. So a week before she turns 17, she comes home from school and finds her mom, or a week before she turns 18, she comes home from school and finds her mom has overdosed on drugs and passed away. This is something she's expected for many years. Her mom was not the greatest mother. She's been addicted to drugs her whole life. And she's had men in and out of the house and, and all that good stuff. When um, the authorities arrive, they tell her, oh, we called your stepfather. You're, and she's like, what are you talking about? She couldn't remember that, her, like she didn't know. Her mom got married when she was around the age of three and the guy took off. And she hasn't seen him for 14 years. She barely remembers him, but he is in town and he's in town with his two sons. And so he comes and picks her up. It was either that or a foster home and it was only for a week. So she decided to go with him. So his middle son, Dax, is a um, blind violinist and he's like world renowned blind violinist. And then she has her, his other son, Cade, who is like the, the muscle that protects them. And then the dad manages them. So they go to the concert. She's, she kind of hems and haws about going to the concert. They expect her to go, but her mom had just died that day. She still went. Um, then the next day they get on a plane and, um, to head to the next venue and the plane crashes. So in the, they, in the, in the wilderness on the way to Canada. So this is a reverse harem stepdad. You had me until then. I know. Yeah. It was actually really, I think I gave it four stars. It was good. I, I think it could have been a little bit better, but it was good. It held my attention. Uh, and I'm into the next one, but I'm like, this girl has like the worst luck. She loses her mom and gets in a plane crash within two days. And then there's other things that happen in the book. And I'm like, that was really bad luck. So I wouldn't want to be her. Let's put it that way. No. I mean, I wouldn't mind being her when she's lost in the wilderness. But never mind. Next. All right. <laughs> okay. So I read Broken Whispers by Neva Altai. And this is about Mikhail and Bianca. You're giving me a look. Did I mess something up again? No. Okay. I'm waiting here. Mikhail is horrifically scarred. He wears an eye patch. We don't know why, but we do find out more about what's happened to him. Like as the story progresses, he is the butcher. (laughs) And so he's like a scary guy. And he is like obsessed with this ballerina and he goes and watches her performances. Well, A ballerina is Bianca and her dad is also involved in this world and he's wanting to make an alliance. And so he offers his daughter up to be married. And uh, Roman, who's the head, he shows the people, the pick his guys, the picture. And he's like, you know, basically is anybody interested kind of type thing. And Mikhail sees it and he's like me, I'll take her. (laughs) And Roman is really surprised by this because Mikhail does not like to be touched. Mm -hmm. And so we learn a lot more about him. And I just like fell in love with him very quickly. Yeah, I love when we have these bad boys of the mafia mob world that are just horrific, but are completely different with Mm -hmm. their family. Their woman. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So this was fantastic. Fantastic. All right. 
All right, so my next read. All right, so I read Uncharted. This is by Julie Johnson. This is another survival romance. So this is about 17-year-old Violet. She's just graduated high school, and she has been offered a job as an au pair for a family who's going to be traveling around the South Pacific. The husband is an investor, and he's looking for an island to build a resort on. So it's going to be hit. It's like a business trip for him. They have a five-year-old daughter, so it's the wife the the husband and like some guys that are working for him and their five-year-old daughter so when violet gets to the airport because she flies from boston to california when she gets to california she goes to get her bag and she has this green duffel bag that was her dad's in the army and she goes to grab it and somebody else grabs it at the same time and it's this gorgeous guy who they get in this big fight over the duffel bag well it turns out to be his duffel bag and she's wrong but she's mortified and so she um looks and sees she knows that his name is B Underwood. She doesn't know what the B stands for, drives her nuts. But she goes to the private hangar where she's going to get on this private jet with the family. And B Underwood shows up. He is a photographer that has been hired by the family. They get in the plane. They start heading to the South Pacific. And somewhere over the South Pacific, there is a crash. And she and him survive. And it's very hate to love at first because they do not get along. And when he finds out her age, he has a conniption fit. But what does it matter when you're on a daggone private island? You're stranded on an island. Doesn't matter. Anyhow, I gave it four stars. I loved it. I just wish there was more. It's kind of a shorter read. A little over 200 pages. I just wish there was a little bit more. Like, I want to see their life later. There's supposed to be a second book. Like, this does, cl this does end... It ends, like it, it gives you the ending, but there was supposed to be a second book, but it was supposed to be out four years ago and it's not out yet. So that sucks. Yeah. But I did like it a lot. So. Well, we kind of had a theme this week. You read two books about plane crashing and I know. being stranded and I read one. I was in a mood. I love survival romance. So if you guys have survival romance recs that you haven't heard us talk about, put them in the comments. I love survival romance. This reminded me a lot of On the Island by Tracy Garvis Graves. Um, mm -hmm. Even the way it ended, the way it wrapped it, wrapped up, reminded me a lot of that one. But I did like it. There, it was a big age gap, too, because he was 30, she was 17. Very grumpy, though. Very closed off. He's hiding something. It even had me tearing up in the middle of it. So just be warned that for the rest of you guys who are normal, you will probably cry. I need to go read that. Yes, you do. All right. So my next read was Save the Date by Monica Murphy. This is about Caroline. She works at a stationery store that sells high-end Save the Date cards, wedding invitations, all that fun stuff. Okay. And she has this bride-to-be come in to order Save the Date cards. And her fiancé shows up a little late. And the bride is like, major bridezilla. Turns out she actually knows the fiancé, Alex, was her brother's best friend in middle school and also her first kiss. And they haven't seen each other for years. And there's a mix-up with the Save the Date card. She goes to take them to deliver them to Tiffany's house and finds Tiffany cheating on Alex. So she decides what to do and decides the right thing to do is to just tell Alex. So she tells Alex. Alex completely believes her, immediately breaks up with Tiffany and asks her to be his fake fiance while he goes to Paris to close a business deal. Okay. It was three stars for me. I really, really like Monica Murphy. So I don't know if you have ruined me, Jessica. And because when the fake dating trope happened in this book, I'm like, oh my gosh, seriously. I thought I loved that trope. I don't. So I feel like either this book just was off for her and or it was just off for me, I guess I should say. Uh, I don't know, or you've ruined me. Or I've I just, I, um, I drug you over to the dark side, and yeah, that's all you want to read right now, and yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so, sorry. Monica Murphy wrote a million kisses in this lifetime, and I love that book, loved it. So I don't know why this was like a three star read. I love you got me. I don't know. So it just makes me think sometimes when I read other authors work, like the Serena Ackroyd book where and Cassandra Robbins, where I gave it a three star. 
like if that's your first book, then I tend to not go and read more by them. But maybe like Monica Murphy, if I would have only read this, I wouldn't have read A Million Kisses in Your Lifetime. Like if I had reverse read those, you know, so it makes me wonder like, ooh, am I like, is it just one book? Yeah. And I really would love the others. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. things to okay. ponder. But with someone with 650 books on their TBR, I don't really have time to go and read more three star books. <laughs> Nope. No. no. Okay. Okay. So my next book is From the Embers. It's by Ali Martinez. And Ali will be at Love in Vegas when we go to Vegas. So I was like, let me try. I've only read one of her books, so I want to read another one. So this is about two different couples. So this is about um, Jessica and Eason and Brie and Rob. So Rob and Eason are best friends and Jessica and Brie are best friends. So when the book first starts out, um, Jessica and Eason are having problems in their marriage. He's an aspiring um, songwriter, singer, and they're just kind of down on, they're just having a hard time. They might lose their house. They have a new baby. She's had some depression, some postpartum depression. And then you have um, Brie and Rob who seem to have a really great marriage and they've got two little ones at home as well, a baby and a, and a toddler at home. And so they decide to leave the kids with a sitter at Brie and Rob's house and go over to Jessica and Eason's house and have game night. And so Jessica and Eason take their kid over there as well. Uh, in the middle of game night, there is an explosion. A gas line leaks and explodes in the house and the house catches on fire. Eason is the first to wake up and he grabs who he thinks is his wife because the dress that she's wearing is the dress that he's seen his wife wear. And he gets her out of the house. When he realizes that it's not his wife, it is uh, Brie. Then the house explodes for a second time. So he saves the wrong woman, but he saves Brie. And so for the sake of the kids, they move in together. Um, she needs help with the kids. She has um, owned, she, her husband was the CEO of her company that she started. And so she goes back to work. He stays home with the kids. And this is their story and how they get past that heartache and how they move on and what happens to them. And there's some revelations and all that. Five stars. It was so good. It was so good. I was here for it. All hmm. over it. Mm-hmm. So good. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Okay. My last book. We're going to have to edit this one. Okay. My last book is Getting Down by Helena Hunting. This is part of her Shacking Up series. I've not read the series. This is a novella in it. I was looking for a quick listen, <laughs> found this, and I'm like, oh. I usually like Helena Hunting. Sometimes she's hit or miss, but I'm, I've am i not read this series, so I'll give this a try. So this is about Ruby and Amelie, and they are throwing a Halloween party. We've already had Ruby's book where this novella falls. So Ruby's already in a relationship and very happy. Amelie is engaged, and Ruby does not think that Armstrong, who is uh, Amelie's fiance, is right for her. Nobody really likes the guy. And so we're kind of seeing that play out a little bit during this Halloween party. And then Armstrong's cousin, Lex, apparently has kind of like feelings for Amelie. And so there's some tension there a little bit. So really not a lot happens at this Halloween party. <laughs> it's just sort of setting up the next book but I did enjoy it and I do want to read the next book to see what happens between Amelie and Lexington and see how that goes okay yeah so it was four stars I mean the writing was great the characters were definitely interesting if I was reading the series this probably would have made more sense to like listen to then but hey sometimes you read a novella and you don't really know what you're gonna end up with true very very true yeah. You should still have some more books to talk about. I right? do. I have um two more books to talk about. Okay. Okay. So this next one, Manny's gonna be so excited about this. This is <laughs> Alien Prince's Mate. And it's by Mina Carter. <laughs> Don't get too excited, Mandy. So this yeah, is okay. about <laughs> this is about Naomi and Roan. So Naomi is living on Earth. 
she's this is in the future things have happened this is in the future um she is living with her baby's dad she's a almost two-year-old little girl and the dad is extremely abusive towards her and one night he goes after their little girl and so she grabs she whacks him in the head knocks him out she grabs her daughter and she flees and so she's running she's got no place to go and she sees these lights on for this place off by the park and she walks in there and it is the agency that gets brides for these these aliens that that live they have a spaceship right above our right right outside our atmosphere and um they do like a, a bride match thing and in order to get away from this guy because she has nothing she decides to do it so she gets sent up to that little ship and and the next day she gets matched and she's matched with the prince and so this is their story. It's short. It's only, it's a novella length as well. Um, it could, I give it three stars. It, it had like the right idea. It was just boring in certain parts. I think, so it says it's a standalone, but the way it, and it's this first in a series, but it, the way it makes it sound is that Mina Carter has other books that um, you've seen these characters in, or at least you've seen him in, and it explains all of these things. Because he was calling her by a name the whole time. We never get told what that name means in his language. Like, and they were talking about other characters that are from other series that, like, we're supposed to know who they are. So while it says it's a standalone, uh-uh, no. I think you have to actually be immersed in her little world. So that didn't work at all. Okay. All right. So my last book for the week, I read The Secret by Lulu Moore. So this is about Kit and Murray. So Murray is the ultimate billionaire playboy. Him and his buddies have this Tuesday club, which is what this series is based off of. And one night they're coming home from playing basketball and there is a baby on his doorstep, a week old baby or a week and a half old baby on his doorstep, baby girl. And he's like, oh, somebody left something. Who, who's is this? Come to find out that is his daughter. The mother want, does not want her. She's left her. She's left instructions and notes. And so him and his buddies try to figure this out. It is a disaster. Um, Murray has two sisters who come in and just kind of like take over the place and try to get him help. So then we have Kit. She's worked for a nanny agency while going through college. Now she's out and she's about to get a job, a very prestigious job, but she's been kicked out of her apartment. Um, not kicked out, like the apartment building was bought. And so it's all, it's, she has to move out. She's kind of fallen on a few hard times waiting for this job to start. And she gets a call from the lady who runs the nanny agency. And she's like, they asked for you specifically. And so she goes and moves in with Murray and becomes the nanny to this adorable little baby who happens to have the same birthday as her. And so there's a few similar, at this point, the baby didn't even have a name because he didn't even know what to call the baby. Um, and so this is their story. I gave it four stars. I honestly think it was more like a three and a half. It, out of all my nanny books that I love, this is not the favorite. It kind of dragged in a few parts, but it was still enjoyable. So it, 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 it worked. I just, you know. Yeah, it's okay. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, guys. Question. How yeah. have you only read one Ali Martinez books? Mm -hmm. That was my second Ali Martinez. I read um, Fight, Fight and Silence. Silence. You didn't read the rest in that series? Oh, okay. No. It took me a while to get into Fighting Silence, too. Like, I wasn't into it in the first few chapters. It, it took a while for me to really get sucked into oh, it. You told me to read it. It was good once I got into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So I do like Allie. I love the ones mm -hmm. I read. Yeah. So, okay. So that is all that we have for you guys this week. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check back on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays for new videos from us and hit that subscribe button. Yes. Until then, we will see you guys in the next video.